All right, now, welcome back. I'm here working on my little hot rod today. Figure out, show y'all a little maintenance. Oh, this is rubber right here. First time I've cleaned it this year. So I gotta go through and, uh, I've been up here beating the rubber out of it, well, scraping the rubber out of it. You can see, cleaning the rubber, I still got a lot more to do. But that's the start. Still got the other side to go, so I'm gonna show y'all how much I get out of it. I'm also gonna talk about rear suspension today. I figure I'd go over some rear suspension and some ideas on what you want your car to do. Maybe somebody can learn something. So all the rubber from both sides. We're not all of it. That's most of the rubber. I'm too late to get it all. But I wanna tell everybody, I appreciate all the new subs. I appreciate all the old subs. We're at 882 right now, so we're getting on up there around that thousand mark so we ain't got much more to go so anybody that's out there that's not subscribed please go ahead and subscribe for us real quick so i'm gonna crawl in this car and get y'all some video all right now this is your run-of-the-mill 88 in a fox body it has 35 spline axles it's got a mosier uh spool and all in it c-clip eliminator stuff like that. it also has sn95 back brakes and the way i get it to fit on the fox stuff is you have to trim this hole here, you had to trim a slot here where you can slide it over the very rear of your flange. And then you just use washers to space it out. And that's how you get it to fit without taking your uh, wheels and your wheels going out. Cause a Fox Body SN95, a Fox Body and SN95 have the same rear width housing, but because this bracket here typically bolts on this side. Oh, this is dirty where I was just cleaning. So, let me clean it off. It typically bolts up on this side in between the, the C-clip, which moves everything over a quarter inch on this, but by the time it's all said and done, it's three quarters of an inch wider the whole rear end or whatever. So that's what moves the wheels out. So that's why it changes the backspace. So if you just trim that slot, you can use this caliper bracket on the inside of that flange and come up with it. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. This right here, these are relocation lower brackets. This, a Mustang, typically what you want to do, everybody used to think back in the day that you want a Mustang or you want a car, period, to squat. You want the back tire, you want the car to sit here, and when it takes off, you want the rear of it to squat down and go. And that's not really the way you get a car to, to go real, real fast on 60 foot, especially a car without wheelie bars. Because a car without wheelie bars, if you get the control arm right, it wants to wheelie. But if you come right here, and you see that upper control arm, See that line, the line? So if you take your upper control arm, the angle it comes, and the lower control arm, the point up here where it meets at determines whether this car separates or it squats. So basically, if you got stock torque boxes, dropping this control arm down right here, whenever not you drop it down, brings that point back closer up here. If you play drag racing, door slam or drag racing, you know, they got a little thing on there where you can play with the idea of what happens. But the further back you move this up, the more it's gonna wanna smash these tires. The car, the body's gonna separate from this axle. It's gonna smash some tires down. And that's how you get a car not to spin so much. ready for this no prep stuff so i'm going to go through and move the control arm back up one notch and then we're going to put some weight in the back of it because right now the way it is i can't put weight in the back of it or otherwise it'll just kill the tires up in the fender wells because the way they uh how low i got the car sitting because this car has stock length lower springs or lower spring it has stock length springs and then with this moving down the, the normal hole is this is right here so I've lowered the car this much, but also without having to cut the spring, since I lowered the car, it changes the lower control arm so that way it separates and it, it does decent at it. And not as fast as I need it to. I mean, I only got old strings, 10 weight on the back of it, which I've been a 116, 60 foot a few times. And I've been a best of a 501 at 142 mile an hour. So see, this rear has been braced. Teddy Hauser. Bra uh, Teddy House race car done this brace and Nigel welded the lower control arm brackets on. But this rear one wasn't really set up for stock, well, for springs in the stock location. It was set up for coilovers in the back, putting a bar across and coilover in it. So what I had to do, I had to come in here and I cut that and you can see how far forwards I moved it. I moved that forwards, which also, 
Sorry about that. I had a phone call. But like I said, this trawler, like I said, it's movable. I got to drill them holes. I ain't never used them. That's the stock hole. And like I said, with this being a stock length, it ain't nothing been trimmed off of it. Just a stock GT spring. And then I've cut it right here and moved that forward so that way it didn't bind right here. Because like I said, this was set up for coilovers. So that, that's what gets the car to plant the tires pretty decently. Anytime you can get that control arm level, like if you lower a fox fly, that control arm is gonna be set up at this angle. So your goal is if it's set up at this angle, then it's gonna to wanna to squat. And when it squats, typically all you're doing is compressing this spring because it's squatting down. It's not actually making this spring. This spring right here has a spring tension of it. And say if it was like 110 pounds, even if you compress it all the way, it's still 110 pounds. It's not a progressive spring that gets heavier but the more you push it, it pretty much pushes the same length per square inch around it. So when you squat, it collapses that down and it don't really put no more force on them tires. It just allows the sidewall of the tire to take out the shock, take out the shock load. So when it separates, it's actually the, the geometry of the car is cramming them tires down lower so that way it gets more traction. So like I said, if you ever seen a Fox Fly that's low or real, real low and it has stock control arms, they don't work for the crap. They never work for the crap. That's why everybody used to leave their cars all jacked up in the air back in the day. Because if you lowered them down real, real low before these come along, then the car would just turn around and knock the tires off. It'd roll out five, six feet and then spin, ten feet, spin. So, like I said, when they come up with the idea of dropping this control arm down to get it to separate, then that's that's when cars actually started going real fast 60 foot was non willy bar stock style suspension so i hope somebody learned something from that i'm gonna go through and get on here and change these bars around i'll be back with you i'd also figure out a big good time to explain y'all what these shocks do so this knob on a single adjustable shock when you turn it left it loosens it when you turn it right it tightens it what's it tightening though so basically all that is tightening is the rebound the up it don't tighten how much it collapsed. It tightens on how fast it separates back apart. So when you have Mustang stuff that's in a stock location, arm, stock up here arm, it's gonna wanna squat. So if you ever seen a Mustang that when it, it initially bites and it rolls out 10, 15 feet and then it unloads the tire, well what it's done, it's collapsed that shock all the way down, that spring all the way down, like it's, or not all the way down, just it's collapsed that spring and then when you when you coil by the spring up, what's it going to do? It wants to uncoil when the force ain't there. So they'll, you'll see a car initially. I'm going to do some videos right after this. I'm going to edit some stuff in here to show y'all. But initially, the car will hook and squat, and then it springs the back of the car to the ground, and it spins the tires. Well, these string singles, what you got, if you have something that's in stock location, you're typically going to run this 5 to 10 clicks from... Like I said, they got clicks all around, sir. So you want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, five to ten tight, depending on how hard you're hitting it. Because if it squats and compresses and it wants to unload, you want to slow down how quick this rear end uncoils that spring. If you're running this car on radial and you have lower control on relocation brackets, you're going to be one to five area because you're going to want it to separate. You just don't want it to separate too fast that it tops the shock out. What I mean by top of shock out is it's fully extended because, like right here, I got them all the way tight. So depending on how how it is right now, depends on how fast. See that rear end? See how it's still creeping down? See, she's still creeping. I got both of them completely tight. See how slow this is? We'll see. You don't want, not, when the power's coming in, you do not want it to just spring it up real quick and top the shock out because it can spring it so fast up that it lifts the back tires up, ideally. Like where it just, it lightens the pressure on the tires and spins it. So what you want it to do, you want you want to control how fast. See how I just moved that and it just moved it. You want you want to control how fast this rear end controls and does what it does. So the rear suspension is the most important part of a drag car. That's why Pro Mod stuff like they don't even have struts and or they're strutted in front. They don't have they don't have uh, like regular style struts. They're just rigid. Rail cars are rigid. They don't the, the, all the adjustments right here in the rear. Well, since this is single adjustable, like I said, you want control. If you got relocation, then the car separates nicely. You got to make it separate 
enough to keep it from wheeling, but also not too fast to where it just slams down. I'm gonna do another test with you. I'm gonna jack it back up. You see how slow it was fully tight? I'm gonna fully loose and I'm gonna show y'all how fast it separates. Okay, now, now this is fully loose. So look at that. As fast as you drop the jack, it pretty much drops. So that's what you have to do. You have to figure out what's your car like because every car is different and not all car likes the same stuff. So you have to figure out when the power's coming on, this thing needs to be separating, smashing that tire down until the torque, you're past the torque of a turbo car or a nitrous car when it all comes in. Like I said, so you want to make sure that they're looser to, to not wheelie and keep it down and keep it planted, but not too loose to where it tops it out real, real fast. And then like I said, if you got stock location arms, everything's in stock location, you're gonna have to have it tight because the car's gonna squat. And as soon as it squats, it's gonna unload. Like right here, I'm gonna show you. That's a prime example of what I'm talking about right there. It took that video right there for me to really realize what was going on with my old car and why it kept spinning tires because it would smack, it would smash that spring down because it had stock location and everything, and then it would uncoil it real quick. All right, now, well, I got the suspension moved. I'll jack it up a few times to make sure that the travel's good, nothing's binding. So, we should be good. Also, we got some, some used tires today. Some 28, 10, 5, 15 ET streets. There. The S is the stiff sidewalls. So they still got plenty of life left on them. That look good. Picked them up, done a little trading on them, so I'll get them on this week. We'll be on getting some videos and testing this weekend, getting ready for the no prep stuff. So please like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you one later. Thank you.